I, the, the, one of the words that comes to my mind through that that I don't think I heard you say, but I feel it, is this notion of patience. You, you have to have patience throughout this process um, because, like you said, it, it might not become clear to you immediately. Yeah. It might take some time. So how are you patiently waiting but still putting one foot in front of the other on a consistent basis? Yes. Patience is patience is great, and that's exactly what it is. I think also the word for me that's always resonated was practice, and I think that also mm -hmm. comes from my whatever belief that I was going to be a professional athlete. But the idea that you <laughs> wait, 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 let, let's rewind that. What athlete were we? we wait, this, this is going this to is the good. NBA. I was going to the NBA, not the WNBA. There was no WNBA when we were little. Okay, Amanda, how were we going to do that? I've never even seen you it's shoot a funny. jump shot. Come on. If I'm sorry? Here. Oh, no, no. I Believe me, I understand that because I'm from the same family of the, the little yet making it happen. However, A-Dub, growing up in the sh in the shy, I guess, yeah, you had the most inspiring probably individual in MJ to make you could think you could do whatever. I mean, every commercial, every shot, every night. We, mm. we rewind VHS, rewind the tape, watch the shot. Kobe thought he watched the shots. I watched the shots. You watched it. I was going to be in the NBA. That That's awesome. I'm sorry. Let, let this, I'm sorry. We can get back on track now. Happen. That did not happen. We, we have a different path to how we got to our greatness. But I think the notion of practice has always been there for me. And lately I've, I've been evolving an idea of, of my studio being called Practice Space Studio. Because I mm. think the idea of practice is both in preparation for something, but it's also in and of itself a ritual. Ah. As if you imagine the idea that, that this is what you're going to be doing no matter what. Yep. Again, the weight is gone. And yep. so when I when I made that choice to leave, not only a profession, but one, if you say, if you tell somebody I'm an architect, everybody goes, oh. You say I'm an artist, people are like, mm -hmm. my cousin mm -hmm. is, yeah, my, my neighbor's an artist. You know, like that, right. that that's such a wide range of things, but there's a kind of assumption that there's a level of discipline and patience and practice that goes into a profession. So our right. school, they do a practice, which was strange to me because it was like, no, a doctor's a practice, a lawyer's a practice, an architect's a practice. If if art is a practice, what's that going to look like? And so that's an endurance. So there's a lot of sports parallels about- A ton. Right? Shoot through the trial. Exercise, warm up. Free throws, shoot, you know, so that kind of mentality always has been there. And so the patience, yes, is there, but it's also that assumption that you're going to get there. So what are you worried about? It's, like, it's, yep. it's faith, right? So you can't have the worry and the faith. So you have to do the work. Faith, faith and fear can't live uh, in the same home at the same time, for sure. Thank you know, but what you just nailed is something that's always so profound to me when you think about there's key principles you can take across multiple disciplines, right? And th those, th they don't change. It's just the 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 artistry is yeah. different, right? Because as I'm listening to you speak and you're talking about artists, I would say that all, you know, athletes, entertainers are all artists. You're all, you all fall within this bubble of artistry. I agree. I think most people don't, don't see that or don't understand that it always baffles me because it's just your chosen vessel or medium, but it's all the medium, same. Medium, exactly. It's all the exactly. same, right? And so it really, when you talk about culture too, for me, you know, there's a, there's a culture of ballers, right? So I literally, I wanted to be a basketball. My two best friends are guys that went on the D1 sports and played. And, but I walked around, it was the, it was everything. It was, it was mm -hmm. a, right? And so that translates to a kind of bravado that you also saw in hip hop that was coming along at the same time. So if you imagine our generation, we have a unique culture of a kind of confidence level that's not based necessarily on anything. Mm -hmm. right? It's based on wanting to show that you put in the work to produce the thing that's better than everything else. Mm -hmm. So it's a competition against yourself. Yes, there's some ciphers or some battles or whatever. But that translates into the mindset, even though visual art and contemporary art is very particular in how its culture operates, mm -hmm. I 
from pulling from these other cultures and like you said, then being a translator in terms of the medium. So I, I feel like it's an unfair advantage, but you know, like No, no, it isn't an unfair advantage. No, it is not. It's it's literally you apply the principles that were birthed in you through the sport of basketball and have taken those into your sport of art. The, yes. the, the various mediums, the various mediums in which you've excelled in, right? And so for me, it's it's not baffling. And I'm hoping for others, they see that these same principles apply to different areas. Yes. Right? I mean, you could pick up, yeah, you could, you could pick up the toolbox. You could take your toolbox and apply it to a whole nother thing. Yes. And you are you are a spitting image of that because we never would have seen you on an NBA court. However, you are definitely performing on an NBA level for sure. And and actually, I might retract the first part of my statement is I will throw out there that we will be seeing you on an NBA court <laughs> because I envision a moment where there's going to be Amanda Williams product visually seen yeah. in some sort of stadium. We're, we're manifesting that. Look, the power of our right. words. We're putting that energy in the universe. Chicago Bulls may be the first place. We're going to call Don C, who's now the creative director over there, and make this happen because y'all both from the shot. Yes, he is awesome. And no, Don is amazing. And oh, what, and it, it's, it's so necessary. Well, you speak on why you think it's so great. So I, I haven't known him that long. I met him, and, and that's on me because he's a great Chicago cultural treasure. But this And I, a great human being. And a great human. The idea that the that the NBA would have this role where this person is coming in and giving creative direction, which ranges from input to the organization, not just about brand, but just about a, a kind of ethos, but then also reaching, not even back, but reaching across parallel to the community. It's mm -hmm. constantly helping the players, the organization understand what that is. So he's part of an ecosystem, but he brings an authenticity to it that I think the average person that maybe, yes, they know the Bulls, but they don't understand the, the efforts that they might be trying to make as an organization. Right. He brings that that gravitas or that that kind of authenticity to to what he's doing and, and hopefully then what that means they're doing. Agree a thousand percent. Agree a thousand percent. So, you know, before this comment, you were talking about the different cultures that have influenced you. And, and I know early in your career, music culture played a key, key role in your storytelling, all, on your different mediums of choice. I mean, I actually have one of your oil paintings um, that has a Stevie Wonder inspiration and is by far one of my favorite pieces for a number of reasons. Um, are, are there other cultures, though, that you are still trying to infuse or, or represent through your work? Great question. Um, there are. There are other cultures, twofold, I'm going to say. One is our ancestors. Mm. And so there's a lot of um, not only untold stories, but there's a lot of stories of of black people in particular, black Americans, but African diasporic in general, who've already done what we think we can't do. And that story is say, say that again. They've already done what we think we can't do. So whether that's the pyramids, I don't know how the mm. pyramids built. I studied architecture and I still cannot tell you. <laughs> Lolly wow. Bella, Ethiopia, right? These are feats, right? But I'm talking about then also everyday things. We have um, a historic number of African-Americans who were receiving patents for inventing things just after emancipation and reconstruction. That's totally buried. And so I stumbled upon this and have become obsessed with this idea that we already gain wealth in these other ways. We already... Um, pioneered ways that we could innovate and do things in everyday life, whether it's the ice cream scooper, the water sprinkler. Like I'm talking about everyday things. I'm not talking about astronomical feats of, you know. Right, right. This is important too, and we've done those things too. We've we've been heads of towns. We've incorporated things. We've built portions of spaceships. We've, you know, you name it, we've done it, but there's a way that we forget or it gets minimized. Um these to what I think are routes of freedom or at least uh, self-determination. And so if you know that about yourself, you got to think differently about what's possible mm. right now. And for mm. you. So that's a culture I'm trying to mine, but it's also then how do you translate that so that the everyday person sees the possibility? So it's one thing to read and, you know, black history, Month is like, 
Garrett A. Morgan invented the stop sign in 1800. We all have that, right? But you don't really understand, like, how are these dudes doing this in this era where they had not even an inkling of the access that we have to basic information, basic resources, right? And so, and it's the fun and the innovation, though. It's not just the practical. So that's one culture that I feel like I'm, I'm wanting to tap into and mine a little bit more. Then another is, is um, because I'm an architect, I make a lot of stuff, right? So the materials are really important, even in something like paint. And so where, where do you turn to un- better understand craft? So whether that's indigenous folks or whether that's ancient histories of people that ma- mastered aquifers or things that you just take and you're like, why does the water work when you turn it on? I don't know. Right. So what in, not the science or the kind of nerdy engineering part, but like way back to the first person that was like, you know what? We need water. I don't want to go over there no more. So how are we going to get to this? Like, again, what's that? What's that? What's that energy that made somebody decide they were going to figure out how to bring water to the inside of your house or you didn't have to go to the well, you're going to come to it. So a lot about craft or kind of, again, that discipline, that practice, but what are these ways that they can enhance my creativity on the level of beauty? So yes, Mm -hmm. functional, but how do I take that and bring it to the everyday person? Because sometimes it feels overwhelming. If you hear somebody describing these things or talking about those things, like, how do you make it for the everyday person? So they're, you know, they're like, I could, yeah, I could do that. Yeah, you invented, okay, I, I can do that. I can fly. Mm-hmm. Right. Can fly. Right, like we are so acclimated to these feats. We, one, think it's not that big of a deal, and two, that we can't do something equally impressive. That's right. So a lot of art is trying to just remind people that they're already the experts in a lot of these things. Wow. You, you said a lot, Ada. <laughs> And no, but in in such a big, powerful way, in terms of the freedom of your thought right now, of what you're looking to explore, I think is a total reflection of you stepping into your purpose um, and being given the tools to even think it. So often we are programmed to not even think that big, that that detailed that intentional and for you to be in that space uh, I'm so appreciative because I know the value you're going to bring and have brought to making a better world for for my daughters and those who look like them um, Mm -hmm. coming thereafter so it's 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 great to hear you pushing the envelope of the next type of culture you want to infuse and what it is you do and challenge and you there's no level of complacency that you were showing with all that you've already achieved and we haven't even checked those boxes uh just yet which is really a beautiful thing to me to hear from you um but i'm not surprised just knowing the type of human being you are but from from my naive eyes you know i've I've watched how art has kind of started to kind of infuse its way into shaping culture from you know having moments like art basil becoming you know a cultural moment on the calendar to so many individuals now um from very diverse backgrounds becoming collectors of art um, cool. with, with your involvement within the art world. What was there a moment that you remember clearly when art and in particular black art um, started to play a, a, a significant part in influencing youth culture or the culture as we know it today? Uh, yes. The short answer is yes. I'm, I'm thinking of a couple of moments Um that are sort of inflection points and then also personal moments that were like, oh, oh nice. well, this, this is important. So I think your audience probably is going to clearly understand that graffiti mm. is a key moment where art rises up as clearly a part of the culture and completely accessible. But if you think about it, it's incredibly abstract. Like it's hard to read glyphs. Uh-huh. We're used to it because we we came of age with it, right? But it's like right. you just look at it, you're like, it's un- it's it's intentionally difficult to read, right? It's coded in mm-hmm. in its form making, and then you felt some type of way because you could read that that was so and so, or you knew that was so and so's tag, right? That so there was a way in which that was infused, and then when you go back and you look at 
you know, the, those early music videos and MTV, the, everything about the visual culture created such a strong visual acumen. So there's even, you know, disciplines or, or academic studies, visual literacy. So you know this through branding, right? There's a way in which we have an entire generation from ourselves on that are so in tune and acute to typeface, color selection. Right? These are things you studied for decades to put through, mostly through advertising. But this is this is an acumen that three-year-olds have where they can understand graphic user interface. Like that's all a, a result to me of that moment. 